So thank you, Heidi. Uh, and uh, my role is to react. So I'm going to react. <laughs> if I get the, all right. Uh, so my reaction is actually framed by what I think is uh, per, uh, per, persistent wisdom from Larry Weed, the father of the electronic medical record, um, problem-oriented medical record system. He said this actually in the 1970s. Both of these quotes are from the 70s. They're more true now, I think, than when he said them. Modern healthcare is a spectacle of fragmented intention. And the question really for this group is, is Caesar on a pathway to increase the size of the spectacle of fragmented intention? The second thing that Larry Weed said is, we practice healthcare as if we never wrote anything down, right? So, you know, we actually write millions of things down, but we've structured healthcare as an industry uh, as if we didn't, so that perhaps an individual practitioner might become better on their own by looking at their own experience but we never, as an industry, learn from the collective experience of everything we've done. So that frames my reaction, and I apologize for those um, who have seen uh, this graphic before, but actually I wanted to use the graphic to point out that the 200 papers uh, produced by Caesar are down here in the graphic, uh, and, uh, and the guidelines are not even in the basket. So clearly, the method to ensure that you either have decades-long delays or you simply make no systems-level impact in healthcare is you rely upon clinicians reading and remembering clinical reports, the published literature, and guidelines. So to paraphrase uh, James Bond, <laughs> the world of all of these acronyms we're talking about this morning really is not enough. And it's not enough because none of them, at least in my view, would contribute in even a small way to the goal of a self-optimizing healthcare system that learns from every decision event. And here, of course, you can't correlate what somebody read with their eyeballs, but if you had a decision support infrastructure of, um, that recognized uh, a, a situation for which there was best guidance available, it provided the guidance, and then you had some way to just track what happened next, you could learn from every decision event whether or not the user followed the best evidence guidance. And that ability to do that would contribute both to improved local operations, so every practitioner, every clinic, every hospital would be happy, and it would contribute to the, the combined real-world experience with genotypes and phenotypes. So NIH would be happy, and, and, and we would all move ahead. And so really the goal needs to be could Caesar be configured so that it contributes to an, uh, a framework where guidance improves as a byproduct of care delivery, specifically care delivery not provided by Caesar investigators? You know, that's where you get the impact. So I have my own idea of how you might do this, and um, two pieces of it are well known. That is, that we've been doing clinical decision support. Uh, in the world of uh, medical informatics for over uh, three decades. And so the idea of having recognition logic that's keyed off things that come into the electronic medical records, that is elements of phenotype or laboratory results or diagnoses that, that uh, basically um, create um, a, a, a situation where a, a rule could fire that gives guidance to some kind of target user, a user could be a clinician, a patient, family. But by and large, what we have failed to do and what I believe Caesar to date and, and ClinGen and the other groups have failed to do is then have that rule connected to a downstream decision support like recognition logic, that is automated recognition logic for the correct thing happening or a good outcome or a bad outcome. And all, that's really all we would need, and that is if we systematically are recognizing the need to invoke clinical decision support. If we systematically track the outcomes of it, now we can close the loop. Now, there are some tools that are widely distributed and even more so with meaningful use. Uh, decision support authoring systems are coming online in large numbers. We have event monitors that are essentially 
computer programs that just spend their whole day just watching things happen in the EMR and looking to see whether rules could be satisfied. And we do have system generated alerts at hopefully the teachable moment of testing, therapy, decision making, counseling. But what we largely lack are the things in, um, in the italics. That is, we then do not downstream uh, have automated tracking of outcomes versus those user uh, decisions. And we also lack something that is prominently featured in the precision medicine uh, planning for its cohort, and that is incorporation of patient reported uh, outcomes, and that is what did the human being for whom this was intended actually experience. So an ideal genomic uh, infrastructure would have a public library that somehow would spontaneously, that is without an NIH grant to do it, <laughs> would spontaneously incentivize this bi-directional engagement with uh, healthcare and research organizations, and it would need to be managed by a, a trusted organization. Um, it seems to me you could have a quid pro quo that if you use the public library's resources, you could have um, both the technology for easily update, uploading aggregates. You wouldn't have issues of HIPAA, of uh, identification of individuals, but the aggregate local uh, experience with the use of that decision support infrastructure. And it is the case that um, since the last workshop uh, where this was prominently featured, the uh, uh, Genomic Medicine 7, there has been notable progress. So the uh, IOM's digitized project is most of the way through designing and implementing two pharmacogenomics use cases. Uh, eMERGE and IGNITE uh, have, have in fact developed the knowledge library, at least that first part of the recognition logic and the advice. I don't know if there's a, a lot of attention to downstream monitoring in an automated fashion. And uh, also a PCORI funded project at Geisinger is uh, doing a comparative effectiveness trial to uh, look at uh, patient-facing uh, decision support to improve uh, patient-provider communication. So um, it's good that we're making small steps there, but I, I think the, the risk of any NIH-funded uh, research consortium that is inwardly directed is losing the opportunity to, as, as one makes incremental progress on expanding the knowledge base of instrumenting it with, by building an engine, at least a prototype of the engine, that if the funding stopped, the engine would still run, it would still learn, it would still get better as a legacy of the project. So that's my challenge and my reaction.